Hello and welcome to Wordplay. This is a talk about narrative in games, what it is and how I got here. So my name is Shella Ramanan. I am a narrative designer on the writing team for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at Ubisoft Massive, which is based in Malmö in Sweden. Prior to that, I was a video games journalist for many years, which involved being a speaker, a panel host at places such as the V&A. I did um, events for BAFTA, the French consulate. I also did um, traditional journalism. I have some pieces in The Guardian or on The Guardian website and uh, broadcast media, uh, speaking and interviewing and doing things for the BBC. So that was my journey journalism career and then in 2016 I decided to try making a game, writing my own game and then made the, it wasn't until 2019 that I made the jump, I left, said goodbye to journalism and made the full-time uh, leap into game development when I joined Massive. I am also the co-founder of Pock in Play. That is an organization founded to improve the representation and the visibility of people of color both in games and in the games industry itself. You can find us on Twitter. We also have a website. So if you want to find out more about the work we do, or if you want to talk to us about how we can work together in our respective industries, that would be awesome. I would love that. So please get in touch. So a little bit about the projects that I've worked on. Um, this is Before I Forget, which is the first game that I ever made under studio name Threefold Games, which I co-founded with Claire Morewood. Um, we did it as a side project um, whilst we still had full-time jobs for the majority of development. We launched in July 2020, which was a whole thing. And then we were lucky enough, humbled to be nominated for a BAFTA in the category Games Beyond Entertainment. Before I Forget is a narrative game about an Indian woman with dementia and the category Games Beyond Entertainment recognizes games that push the medium forward in some way, whether that's through design or narrative or some other way. So I'm also working on a small game that's in pre-production called Windrush Tales, which is a narrative focused game uh, about the Windrush generation and that period of British history, uh, which relates to myself because I am of Caribbean heritage. This is a game called Assemble With Care by Us Two Games, and it is a beautiful game. I really recommend it. I worked on it as a freelancer, providing, I worked on the vertical slice, the writing for the vertical slice, and it was a really great experience for me. It was early in my developer career, whilst I was working on Before I Forget. Um, I also have provided small editing services to other developers and also comic book writers. And here we are at the opposite end of the spectrum, both in terms of scale and budget. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which is my current project um, working at Ubisoft Massive. So what is a narrative designer? Funnily, I've just seen someone ask that on Twitter. What's the difference between a narrative designer and a writer? But first, when I tell people I'm a narrative designer, I get two questions. People are like, oh, so are you like a programmer? And no, I'm not. I don't come from a technical background, but I do write in engine. And the, the game engine is the software that makes the game run, kind of like a car engine. And so I do work in a technical space, but I'm not technical. Um, so the second question is like, oh, so do you just like write the dialogue? And yes, uh, as a writer on the narrative design team, I do write the words that people say in games, but um, there is a lot more to writing games than just the dialogue. So 
writing for games. So the writing aspect is focused on the characters and their journey through the game and the setting. And one of the things when you're writing for games you have to consider is the player character. So I have two examples here. One is Lara Croft, who you might know from the games or from the films. Um, so she is a third person character, which means in the respect to a game, that means that we actually see her in front of the camera. We see her whole figure moving around. And this puts her at a remove from the player but she it means she also um, generally she would have like a lot more backstory um, so you know we know that she has an aristocratic background we know that she's lost her father and you know she sort of traipses around the world um, stealing artifacts from different cultures and so we know quite a lot about her and in contrast a character like Master Chief who I have here who's from the Halo games and that the Halo games are a first person shooter so that means that um, the the, the POV is the camera is as if it's Master Chief's head. So all you'll see of him really, unless you see catch a reflection, are his hands. And if you look down and you can see your feet, your own feet, because you are Master Chief essentially. So um, so the point of that is that the player can inhabit that character and can also imprint themselves onto the, the main character. Um, so typically a character like Master Chief will have very little dialogue. He has very little to say and he, he doesn't really have have um, much of a tone or you don't know much about him from his dialogue. That is just so that the player can be Master Chief. So when it comes to narrative design, in contrast to the writer, the narrative designer is focused on the player and the player experience and also how the story is told. So for instance, let's say we have a teen romance space academy adventure. Um, so it, the narrative designer will be like, well, you know, are we going to use puzzles that maybe you unlock new friends? And then once you have friends, you have to figure out how to stop the big disaster that's going to suck all the planets into a black hole including your beloved academy or is the game about upgrading your ship and um, sort of like visiting other planets um, so basically the narrative designer will be concerned with what is the player doing so how do these two things work together? Um, so like the writer is focused on character and the narrative designer is focused on player. So what happens? So for instance, what if our teen romance Space Academy adventure, um, if the story from a, a story perspective, you want to, to have themes of anti-colonialism in space. So, um, but then on the other hand, what if the narrative tools are focusing on things like expansion, mining, um, you know, using the ship to go to other planets and maybe claim and conquer lands, maybe you're naming planets, um, maybe you're seeing all the alien races as as enemies. And in, in that um, example, then those two things like narrative and storytelling are at odds with each other. So the way that you could flip that is like maybe you have puzzles um, and you unlock your new alien friends and then um, maybe there's some sort of space gardening element and you're maybe trading seeds. And so, you know, it's all about sort of cooperation and um, collaboration. It has more of a sort of Star Trek feel to it than this kind of colonialist sort of perspective on space as something to conquer. Uh, maybe you still could have the ship upgrades, but maybe it's just so that you can go to the Galactic Drift cha Championships and um, race with your new friends. And so that's when narrative design and writing um, really work. They have to support each other and that's when the best game magic happens. That's the ideal. What are the key qualities for a game writer? So uh, number one is be a collaborator. Collaboration is key uh, because making a game is like a barn raising. There are just so many moving parts and so many people and all of those people are absolutely integral to getting this thing done because making games is hard. And so one of the key things about a good being a good collaborator is to understand how your work impacts other teams. For instance, does the animation team have enough budget for that cinematic you want? Um, what pressure does that new design idea you've had put on the audio team? Um, is that 
uh, thing that you thought of even possible in the current sort of functionality of the game. Um, second is flexibility. You need to be flexible. Like all writers have to be ready to kill their darlings, um, but it's easier when you're doing it yourself. But um, cuts can come for all kinds of reasons, whether it's like scope to get the game back in on budget and on time, on schedule. Um, it could come from like game design changes. Maybe um, in the last play test, we, we discovered that the game just isn't fun the way it is. So some things have got to change, which could maybe then change some of your quests. Maybe a character isn't needed anymore. Maybe two characters have to be merged into one to make it make sense in the new game design. Um, so it's about being flexible is knowing when to push back and fight for something that you feel is important, but also knowing when to let something go and move on and just keep making the game the best it can be in the current design it is. Um, another key skill is to have versatility. So you need a variety of different writing skills to write for games because you may be writing a lot of documentation like way before you get anywhere close to even writing a line of dialogue. You'll be writing, so, so it could be like character bios, um, it could be sort of world building stuff and um, you know being able to write with constraints is a really great skill to have um, and then you know there are like lots of world building elements that games like to use like maybe journal entries um, maybe there are pages of newspapers flying on the wind that players collect and then somebody has to be able to write in that kind of style the style of a newspaper or like a piece of propaganda or something so versatility is my third skill so I said number one is being a collaborator, but who do you collaborate with? Um, so there are quest designers and level designers and level artists. Those are the people that in my job at Massive, I collaborate with them all the time, all day, every day, have constantly have meetings with them about the shape of the quests and how they're going and what the flow is and what we're going to change. And, um, you know, you collaborate with game design and like how that impacts story and you know what we what we're trying to do and whether those what we can use what tools can we use in the narrative design of our quests um level art like i said because they like bring everything to life like they everything rich and alive all of a sudden and it's awesome to see that happen the same with animators and cinematics and cinematics directors um sometimes you'll be on a mocap set um if you're on a big budget game um, helping with the sort of tone of a scene and there, there are so many collaborators that I'm sort of I feel bad for missing anyone off so there's people like tech art um, uh, the tech LDs level designers audio is really important for like you know adding the atmosphere and for our like special effects noises music oh, when the music drops in on uh, a game is like amazing how, how much that changes stuff props the people who make the props that are the things that like make the, the world feel rich and lived in and tells story part of the story and that characters can hold stuff and um, uh, character artists um, you'll talk to them about you know what sorts of stuff does your character carry around and then the technical tools teams who are behind the scenes but they are awesome because like we'll go to them and be like there's this this thing is like part of the tool is really clunky and awkward and I have to do these other steps just to get this to work and then they'll put it on their to-do list and one day they'll be like oh oh, by the way, we fixed that thing and we'll be like, oh my God, you're amazing. So the technical teams are awesome. And uh, yeah, collaborating is great. It's part of the funnest part of making games. Okay, so some top tips. I feel like I've just like rattled through uh, writing for games and narrative design in games. So uh, let's quickly do some top tips. Um, play games. It might seem obvious, but um, play widely. Don't forget about mobile games. There's loads of free, beautiful games on mobile or like stuff that's just not very much. I mean, pay for games, but there's also like End of the World is one of my favorite, um, like free, it's just a tiny game. And then there's places like itch.io, which has loads of inspiring creators on there, like just like giving us games for free. And then, and you can like um, support them as well, which is really good. You can like decide how much you want to pay for a game. And then Bitsy is another space that has like really cool creative sort of pixel art uh, games with like lots of limitations through the Bitsy tool. Uh, make something. So you could be uploading your own game to itch.io or you could go to Bitsy, um, look up Bitsy 
bitsy and make your own bitsy game. Um, so I would say um, either join a game jam and make a game that way, or like use some of the free tools like Ink and Twine and Game Maker or like Bitsy and make your own thing. So think of a small idea, then make it three times smaller than that because you've probably thought of something that's too big to finish. And even if it's just like a, a 10 minutes like branching um, text-based ad adventure or something, you know, a, a little story. Um, it's great to be able to show that you don't you don't just have the skills to write cinematics, but you actually understand uh, interactive storytelling. So make something and reach out to the developer community as well. Um, so go to events like Game Jams is a good way to meet people, but also just going to events. Um, there's loads of stuff like uh, GDC talks and on YouTube and um, Adventure X is focused on narrative games. It's an amazing event that's in London at the British Library. Hopefully it will be happening this year, um, sort of if uh, the pandemic doesn't get worse again. Uh, go to that, speak to people who are exhibiting their games and that's a great way to just like get to know the industry and how it works. So I feel like it went really fast, but hopefully it was useful to you. And just a little list of resources. So Game Makers Toolkit is uh, a series of videos on YouTube and they kind of unpack games, how they work, what makes cool games cool like why are those games so enjoyable um emily short is like an expert in interactive fiction um which is at the heart of storytelling in games and she has a great blog so check out her blog um she just like really digs into the sort of um the sort of cutting edge of uh interactive storytelling um gdc like i mentioned is the game developers conference um they have lots of talks on youtube even the old ones um from really great inspiring Inspiring creators are still relevant and um, will also like just give you a sort of history and a backdrop of like how storytelling in games has evolved. And then, like I mentioned before, Adventure X is awesome. I think it's my favorite game event. Um, so check it out. And I hope this has been useful and good luck.